Hi, this is Peggy with Natural Awakenings Magazine, and we're here today with Ellen Katz, an integrative psychotherapist and the clinical director of Inner Balance in Northbrook. And welcome, Ellen. It's so Hi. great to talk with you. So good to be with you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. I know you and I have been talking about um, everything happening right now, people staying at home, self-care, self-love, and also some feelings of isolation that many of us may be feeling, even if we aren't physically alone, there may be a lot of feelings of just being alone. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so as I, I, I think I, I mentioned it in that blog that you were referring to, and that is that I think we're constantly aware that something is off, you know, um, all of us know that life is not normal. And so the minute that our brains start having to deal with that discrepancy, we go into a bit of a fight or flight that we're constantly trying to modulate, you know? So I think everybody's struggling in their own way, whether they're conscious or not, whether it's, you know, people that talk about that they're overeating or that they're not getting food. But the biggest thing is missing social contact, especially for people who are used to that or who rely on that or extroverted. Mm -hmm. um, it is funny to talk to, ex to introverts who say, my life's not that different, you know, or people that are just really used to being home and, and working from home. In fact, I think some of them are like, now you guys get it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. how um, cut off from the world we normally are if we're working yeah, from home. And kind of think that makes them feel better. But, but for this isolation piece, I think we really need to think about it deliberately because we are mammals mm -hmm. and mammals are social animals and we get our sense of safety just like any other mammal by knowing there are other mammals around. That is completely subliminal, under the radar. We're not aware of it. This is probably why in part we like having pets oftentimes. Just there's another being right there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Who, who, so, who might not be arguing with us. <laughs> definitely, I hear many <laughs> people talk about that. But the, the, the key is that once we can learn how to befriend ourselves, which is for many people a very big challenge, then being in your own company actually can be delightful. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds a little odd, but for a lot of folks, they don't like being with themselves. They would much rather self-medicate or run away or do something else or get busy or distracted or feel throw themselves into a project and i think a lot of people watching this can relate i mean i relate you relate we, we do that sort of by default and so what we want to teach ourselves in this lifetime is that there's a time for that and there's a time for really being deliberately with ourselves and everybody's got to find their own version of that you know, is it, it's almost like ask yourself, what would you, what would you love to do with me right now? <laughs> you know, I think I'd like to garden or I'd like to read or I'd like to just rest. Sometimes the body's like, I just want to rest for five minutes. Yeah. Or for those people who are not working right now or who are finding like they're just big gaps between feeling connected or feeling even productive or necessary you know, maybe finding ways in which they can anticipate, how will I be more useful? How can I prepare myself to be a more productive or contributing person going forward? You know, so again, it's in collaboration with yourself. Does that make any sense what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. It's, yeah, well, you have to, I would imagine, allow yourself to be friends with yourself at this mm -hmm. point if if you certainly can't force it but yeah you have to, we have to i like that word it's an invitation yeah. so i think to begin with we got to say if you for example have had a history of being critical of yourself which i think a lot of folks will admit to having high standards being a perfectionist um demanding mm -hmm. or maybe not demanding but not really liking yourself very much or not feeling particularly lovable. Okay, these are very common states of affairs for human beings on this planet. So what do we do with those conundrums? Especially answer, when it's magnified right now because everything is. we're talking to ourselves sometimes. And we can't <laughs> escape ourselves, yeah. right? We can't escape. There is no escape. And a lot of emotions are coming up. A lot of my, my clients are like, oh, yeah, I'm feeling the sadness I've been trying not to feel for the last 17 years or whatever. So. It's, it's more like, okay, 
I need to take the meta view, sort of the overview of my life. Realize I started out innocently and that over the years I've tried different ways to do the best I could. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I made poor decisions, but I learned, or maybe I didn't, I made other decisions. Whatever it is, it was my journey up till today. Can I have some grace about this person? Can I honor her just where she or he is right now? So, for example, I had a session today with a woman saying, I just can't make myself do the stuff I need to do. Um, I can't get myself to do my you know, father's uh, paperwork or something like that. And she couldn't. She was paralyzed. And I said, you know what? How about if you can just say to that resistant part of you, it's okay. Just we're going to pick one baby step. Just do one step. Forget it. I don't care if we get this done in two weeks. We are just going to take the smallest possible step, and that's going to be a victory today. Mm -hmm. So you know what you need in order to feel accepted and like that person who's talking to you is legitimately and authentically being kind and friendly to you. That's what you're needing from yourself. And if, one last thing, Peg, I'm sorry, I'm long-winded. <laughs> if you're not good at giving that to yourself, which a lot of people are, just can't even fathom being kind, you could say, okay, what would somebody say to me right now? What would a really kind person say to me right now? Or what would my spirit guide say to me right now? Or what would my ancestors say to me right now? And those kinds of questions can open you up to possibly hearing some wisdom or some comfort from another source, you know, that can touch you right where you need to be touched. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. One of the things I've been reading a lot lately um, in people's social posts and in articles is a feeling on many people, especially if they're used to being busy, that mm -hmm. they're failing that they're falling behind what they should be doing right now, that, that they, society, whomever has an expectation that everybody should be producing more and creating more and coming oh, up I've with things and people are judging themselves. How Absolutely. Can we, how can we balance that? No, and especially those who are working at home or creative types of people that are like, why am I having a writer's block? Or why am I you know, not being, being able to produce? And I think it's really the same thing that we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. um, this self-love that we all need, and it sounds corny and it sounds cliche, but every human needs that love in a different way. So depending on your temperament, if you're very much of a perfectionist and competency is your focal point in life, your core need. I think you need to back off and just say, look, these are very unusual times and we're going to step back as a judge. Mm -hmm. We're going to step in as a kind hearted presence. We're going to have faith that the person that I've always been is still the person who I am and will be, but I'm going to give myself a little break right now. I, I, I don't have to keep up with the Joneses and I don't have to keep up with that highest standard. It's okay for me to admit that I'm not a hundred percent, even if I don't feel like there's anything wrong, I'm not 100% right now. I can't be. There's two people with masks out there. I'm, I'm not normal right now. So if I can accept that that's the new normal to not be normal, and it's really okay, then we, we, lower, those, we lower that bar of expectations. Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and probably yeah. stop some of the mental chatter that's going on in our yeah. lives. I do strongly encourage folks to find two things that, are, I mean, besides the basics, which we all know we need, we need rest, we need exercise mm -hmm. to be healthy. And I'm not talking about everybody's got to go out and run laps. It's, you can do yin yoga, you can do tai chi, which is all on YouTube if you don't know where else to get it. You can do qigong, you can do yoga, you can just do stretching. But to spend a good 10 to 30 minutes a day doing something in your body, to get out of your head and into the body is very, very important. The other thing is something that is going to feed your soul. Okay. I don't care. You know, if you don't like spiritual stuff, listen to a story on an audio book. 
you know, but feel like you're being taken care of in some way. And of course, I, I love teachers like, you know, all the um, Shambhala teachers and uh, those kind of awareness kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you can listen to Eckhart Tolle a few times. It's not going to hurt you. <laughs> it's just, they, it, you, these aren't the things you learn and then you never have to go back yeah. and listen to again. So the, the, those are the, we need food, we need exercise, we need water, we need rest. And the last one is owning your power, owning that you have free will, that you're not a victim. That in this moment, whatever I did yesterday or five minutes ago is over. The only relevance that it has is whatever fallout there is, I guess, and how much I keep thinking about it. But this moment is my moment. This is my canvas. This is my moment to decide what's the next good move right now so that I can take care of me and ultimately be the best person I can be to serve, right? And perhaps that next best move is a look at it tomorrow. Yeah, I'll put it on hold. I've done as much as I can do today. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. Now, one thing I want to ask you quickly on nourishing is music because I know you have a musical side to you as well. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know when this is going to be available online, but this Sunday um, I'm going to be doing my first workshop on Zoom as a fundraiser for the Infinity Foundation because my band, the Bhakti Caravan, which does something called Kirtan, which is a kind of um, musical genre that comes from India, so it's a little call and response of simple mantras back and forth just to kind of create a vibe of relaxing and letting go and sometimes getting a little bit excited about just how beautiful life is, mm -hmm. the world is. Rechanneling our energy. Music, but it doesn't have to be. It's just, uh, it's, it, it, it's open to everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be at 2.30 Sunday and whatever day that is, I think the 26th, 20, yeah, 26th of April. And that morning I'm doing a radical acceptance Zoom workshop through Infinity. So it's going to be a real three-hour workshop on literally letting go of the judgments of yourself and the world so that I'm not constantly in that state of agitation reaction something to get mad about every five minutes or get worried about or get freaked out about so radical acceptance is our morning and bhakti caravan which this time is going to be me teaching mantras and singing a little bit with the harmonium and i have a few guests coming on to do a chance so that'll be fun so yeah i mean i music is awesome i was listening to something on, on a facebook live i mean there's so many cool mm -hmm. things happening right now last night and it was just lulling me into a beautiful sleep and i just think it's it's an interesting time because people are being forced to be more innovative and creative and resourceful mm -hmm. and um new things are are popping up that wouldn't have popped up before so yeah. it'd be interesting to see how we go back you know or go forward i should say right and what we keep from this time mm -hmm. what new habits we form hopefully hopefully yeah. we'll keep the gems the silver lining yeah yeah well, great so thank you so much thank you I really Ellen. enjoyed this conversation with you peggy i always do yeah thank you and if people want to find out more about you and about inner balance how do they okay so inner balance is on facebook unfortunately that's pretty much we have a inner balance now website mm -hmm. innerbalancenow.com um, Inner Balance is on Finkston Road in Northbrook, but we do sometimes sponsor things all over the Chicago area, and now it's it's national. I did a meditation Tuesday night. We had people from Alabama, California, oh, and New York on it. It was great. So things are changing. So if you go to meetup, meetup.com, and you look up Inner Balance Meditation, it's free to join it, and all of our events are there. It's about a 3,000-person-plus group. Mm -hmm. but you know, people just choose what they want to do. Yeah. So that's an option. And uh, that's the best way. Wonderful. Inner balance meditation on, on Meetup. All right. Thanks so much for your time. Great. Thank you, Ellen. Take good care. You Thank too. you.